everyone, welcome to my channel, 10 Ways to Wear It, your home for relatable, wearable, and affordable fashion. I'm Alicia, and today's video is all about how to not go broke this holiday season. Now, I know this video might seem a little early because we're still in October, but trust me, the holidays are right around the corner, and this video is gonna address decor as well as gifting and hosting the holidays. So we know that Thanksgiving's coming up and then Christmas and all the other holidays that some of you out there might celebrate. So it's time to start planning now. So if you want some tips and tricks on how to save money but still be generous, still decorate, still host and do all the things, let's go ahead and jump right into this video. I'm speaking from experience today. Okay, you guys, so like I said in my intro, I know this video might seem a little bit early because we're still in October, but I'm gonna be doing quite a few gift guides in November because I think all of your shopping should be done before December 1st. That's just how I move these days. And so I wanted to put this video out early just to get you all thinking and planning, especially if you're gonna be hosting holidays. I know a lot of the ladies in my comments are, you know, the matriarchs of the family and whatnot, and you probably host most of the holidays at your house am i wrong and that can be a huge financial burden like hosting everybody just gets to show up with a you know a pack of plates while you spend thousands on meat sides food drinks all of that and you know it can be very taxing so i wanted to put this video out now so i have my notebook here with my notes i'm going to be reading it a little bit but most of it I kind of already know. But the first thing that I think we need to do to not go broke or put ourselves in a tight space for the holidays is to plan ahead. You really do have to plan ahead. When you're talking about your decor, you need to plan ahead. When you're talking about the list of people you need to buy gifts for, you need to plan ahead. Um, you wanna take advantage of any upcoming sales. So we got Veterans Day coming, then we have Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up. And also, I think, like I said, all shopping should be done by December 1st. Personally, that's always my aim these days so that I don't put myself in a tight space coming up at the beginning of the year. I like to have all my shopping done before December 1st. If I happen to forget anybody, I'll usually just pick them up a really, really budget-friendly gift card, okay? And I'm talking about $25 or less. If it's a coworker, $10, okay? But yeah, planning ahead is definitely going to be your best friend when it comes to like saving money and not going overboard because I think a lot of the sales and stuff start happening towards the end of October and November. And then in December, things kind of spike back up. And that's especially if you're gonna be decorating. Like if you're looking for those holiday decor items, get them now. You'll see them marked down at different places right now. Pick them up now. Don't wait until November and December because they're gonna spike back up, especially like Christmas trees, uh, wreaths, you know, garland, things like that. All the stuff that you find at like Michaels and Joann's, like arts and crafts types of stuff. It's on sale right now. So if you're not gonna get it now, you better get it now. <laughs> on to the next tip. My next tip for not going overboard as far as budget during the holidays is to evaluate the list of people you need to buy gifts for. Do you need to buy gifts for all your neighbors, your coworkers, your gardener, the mailman? Like I know that, you know, I personally do like to give my mailman a bottle of wine, but that's just a bottle of wine out of my cabinet. I hope you don't watch these videos, but um, like you need to evaluate all the people on your list that you need to buy gifts for. It's like we just, especially if you're generous like me, I love giving gifts. I love giving people gifts. And I think I'm a pretty good gift giver. And so I love their reaction and I love the idea that they're gonna love what I got them and use what I got them. And so I can definitely go overboard thinking I need to get every single person something like it. And it's just like, I don't need to do all that. Like I stopped doing that a couple of years ago because I just found I was just buying so much stuff for people. And even though it's coming from the heart and I'm not looking for anything back, it's still like, okay, I done bought you something three, four years in a row and you ain't even bought me a damn coffee mug. So yeah, evaluate that list of people that you need to buy things for. And that would include evaluating your own kids. If you have grown kids like me, I'm in my forties, I really don't need my parents to buy me a Christmas present. Of course they do sometimes. My dad always does, he always does. But my mom, she usually will send a card. Sometimes she'll go pick up a little something, but sometimes she won't. I'm perfectly okay with it either way. She does not need to buy me a gift. She don't need to spend her money on me, because trust me, I buy myself everything I want. <laughs> on to the next tip. 
So the next idea that I have for not going overboard budget wise during the holidays is to think outside of the box when it comes to your decor and use as much of the stuff that you already have. A lot of us spend a lot of money on decor every year and it's like why are we using the stuff that we already have and when I say think outside of the box there's a lot of items that are actually pretty inexpensive um, including like bowls and things like that. Um, matter of fact, let me grab some bowls and show you guys some really cute bowls. Okay, y'all, I'm back. So, like I was saying, bowls can be really inexpensive. Like, this is a pack of, I think, 10 bowls from Amazon. It was super inexpensive. This is like the burlap with the gingham trim bowls. And then these are a larger version of those bowls. This is a red version of those bowls, the gingham bowls. So this is like a pack of 10 and I think it was like $8. Those make such cute garland and all you need is like a burlap ribbon like this, inexpensive. And then you can string it along different places in your place. Like think outside of the box, instead of like buying super expensive ornaments and stuff like that, stuff like that really can do it. And also one year I wanted to do an African printed tree. So instead of buying like African print balls, which are so expensive on Etsy, I just took balls that I already had, bought African print swatches, and covered those balls. Like, you can do something like that. You have to get kind of creative and just stop buying so much decor every year. Like, I found that I was just getting crazy with decor every year. It's like, you, you want to do a different tree every year, you're going to have to get a little more creative, girl. Especially because I live in an apartment. I'm not in my house yet. Uh, when I do get in my house, it's going to be Christmas all year long because I love Christmas time. But I'm not there yet. And so I needed to kind of just calm down with that. So when it comes to your decor, it really is no need to go broke. And then also, you can trade with other people that you know. If somebody else wants to do a tree like you did and you want to do a tree like they did, ask if you guys can kind of trade ornaments. I've loaned out my ornaments to family members. Uh, one of my cousins was doing like a gingham tree, like a black and white tree. I loaned her all my gingham ornaments. Like you don't, you don't have to buy stuff. You can ask around or if there's somebody you particularly know that has decor that you might want to use. Call them up and say, girl, how you doing your tree this year? Oh, can I use all that purple stuff you used last year? It's okay to do that. Get creative, think outside the box, and use as much of the stuff you already have. Alrighty, so before I get into the video, I want to show you all exactly what you're going to need if you want to recreate this tree or a similar tree. The first thing you're going to need are some African fabrics. These are fat quarters that you can purchase on Amazon. They come in sets of 15, and as you can see, they are in all different types of African prints. I basically took the fat quarters and cut them into squares like this, and I took some old balls that I had from last year and used this string to cover the balls with the African fabric. So you're going to need this gold string or something similar and you're going to need of course some African fabrics to cover any kind of Christmas balls that you already have but I basically cut them into squares like that and I'll show you all that in a clip after this one. The next thing I have here are some gold bowls. These are from Amazon. They come in sets of 12 and I bought three packs of those because I think they'll go really pretty with the African prints. I also have a large piece of Ankara fabric here for my tree skirt. I have these really cute little gifts. Um, they're like ornaments that I purchased uh, from from a Etsy shop called Shop Kente. And like I said, they're little gifts wrapped with some burlap string and they have a little seashell on the front. They are adorable. So those are gonna go on the tree. Of course, my main attraction is gonna be the balls that I made. I made about 40 of them. And like I said, I just took that African fabric and wrapped it around some old Christmas balls. The Christmas balls look like this. And I just took that fabric and wrapped it around and I'll show you all that in a clip after this But yeah, as you can see you see that gold string around it and they just look really pretty I have a bunch of different colors here I made about 40 of them to put on the tree So the tree is going to be so colorful and pretty the last thing that I have for the tree is going to be These and I want to use these to create like a tree topper that almost looks like fireworks coming out of the tree So that's what I bought those for I picked these up at Ross and yeah I have some extra lights there and these are just some stock that I'm gonna hang on my TV console but yes that's what you're gonna need to basically to make the tree and of course everything will be linked below now let me show you all how I made these gorgeous Christmas balls they're so cute another thing that I have started doing to stop going overboard budget wise during the holidays is to set a bottom line amount on what I will spend for the holidays that's gonna include all the gifts for everybody I need to buy for that's going to include any decor that I'm going to get 
and I stopped using my debit card for that. So what I do now is either pull the cash out of my account and have it in my little cash envelope thing. I've showed you guys that I got from Amazon. It's like a little cash envelope binder. I'll put it in there and just pull from that or I load it on like a Visa gift card and use that if I'm ordering stuff online. But I don't just keep going in my account, going in my account, especially because I'm trying to buy a house. I don't like the constant spending out of my um, bank account. So I like to do that during the holidays since I do tend to make a lot of purchases. I'll do that instead of like constantly pulling from my account and that way I can better keep track of what I'm spending as also stick to that bottom line amount. That can be $500 for you, that can be $1,000, that can be $300 for some people. Some people might say I'm not going over this amount for my family, friends, my man, whatever and that's perfectly okay. It's a good idea to do that because sometimes you can really lose track of what you're spending during the holidays and then before you know it you've spent two, three thousand dollars on stuff and it's like wow like I really didn't need to do this and so you go into the beginning of the year trying to make up for all that spending and so you can't even enjoy yourself or take a little vacation or something like that no we don't want to be in that position so you know make sure that you're not just dipping in your account either take the cash out that you're gonna spend on all your holiday stuff or put it on a Visa gift card or something like that the next tip that I have to avoid going broke during the holidays is to think more sentimentally about gifts like I said before, I'm actually a very generous person and I enjoy buying gifts for people. My little brother David is like that too. Shout out to you Monty. He loves to buy people's gifts. He loves giving gifts. He loves to see people's reaction to his gifts. And so we kind of put ourselves in like a weird position because we just love buying stuff for people. And so now what I've done is kind of started thinking more sentimentally about gifts. Like instead of like feeling like I need to make a whole presentation. I just get more have gotten more practical about what I give people like specifically like co-workers it's okay to give them a nice coffee mug you know a little hot cocoa set inside of it or something um, you know like a nice pen set with a journal or you know if uh, you know a person that travels a lot to get them a little set of like travel size stuff maybe a toothbrush mouthwash things like that that they could use for like one of their upcoming vacations like that's something that I could probably do for my sister as one of her gifts <laughs> but like things like that you know for neighbors to buy them like a living plant from like Trader Joe's or somewhere where they're inexpensive or bake them some cookies, bake them a cake if you're a baker, um, if you know that they like your food maybe make them something to eat. Like just think more sentimentally about gifts instead of like thinking of expensive things like perfumes and you know just expensive clothing and stuff like that or gift cards that are kind of expensive think more sentimentally I actually love receiving things that I can use even if they're small things I really love receiving like cute little things that I can use so a person doesn't have to go out and spend a whole bunch of money on me and I'm talking specifically if you if you gift your coworkers or your neighbors or like just people who are more like associates maybe your realtor or your mailman stuff like that just kind of think more sentimentally more practical keep it simple it's okay and I have some great gift guides coming up for you guys I even have a gift guide that features all gifts that are around ten dollars so stay tuned for that one I've already gotten all the stuff and I'm actually gonna be giving those away to people so yeah stay tuned for my gift guides but yeah think a little bit more sentimentally when it comes to your gift giving so now I want to talk a little bit about hosting a lot of you ladies out there will actually be hosting the holidays at your home and that can get crazy expensive it really can so I do have a few tips that I want to give you all regarding that um, I don't have a home so I don't really have to worry about hosting there's plenty of people in my family that have homes that actually host our holidays but even they have mentioned that it can be very burdensome financially as well as just physically like cleaning up after people and the day after you know you have all the food and leftovers left at your house it can be a lot sometimes but I do have a couple of tips so the first one is designate as much as you can so designate as much of the meal as you can including the decor if you know somebody who loves to decorate like me I love to decorate if my cousin called or my aunt called and said you know can you bring the decorations I would be so happy to do that like no problem um, be specific about what you want people to bring and be clear about your vision so if you know you like a very upscale Thanksgiving dinner a very upscale Christmas 
Christmas dinner, be specific, even include like inspiration photos when you text that person or you text the group text to the family, like text some inspiration photos. If you want a certain type of plates, you know, you don't want the, just the paper plates. Maybe you want the harder disposable plates, like plastic disposable plates. Text some pictures out and let them know so that they have a clear understanding of your vision. And I think it's also a good idea to have a like what you bring you leave policy. Um, I don't think that's good to have generally for every occasion at your house, but for the holidays, I think it's a good idea if you are the host because you tend to spend so much more hosting. It's like what you bring, you leave. Okay, so if you bring a big bottle of Belvedere, you know, one of those tall ones they sell at Costco, if we don't finish it, it's staying here. <laughs> see a problem with that um yeah personally I'm the type of person who whatever I bring the majority is gonna stay there it might take me a little bitty plate home or something but I'm not gonna like try to take it all back home so I think that's a good policy because like I said when you're hosting it can get a little bit crazy the next thing I want to talk about is whether you should give money or give gifts when you are thinking of your holiday gifts sometimes I think it's a better idea to give money Sometimes I think it's a better idea to give the gift. And sometimes I think a combination of the two can be perfect. It really just depends on you and it depends on the people that you're giving the gifts to. When you're thinking of people like your siblings, nieces and nephews, kids, you know, um, people like that in your family that you actually buy gifts for. Is it a good idea to maybe just give them $25, $50 or $100 or actually go out and buy stuff? And would you spend more money if you're actually buying stuff versus just putting money into a card? You have to ask yourself that question because it's going to vary from person to person. I know like for me with my mom, I buy her one thing for Christmas and then I give her money with that one thing. And that one thing can be a sweater, it can be a robe, it could be pajamas, it could be a scarf, it could be a little mini perfume set or something like that, some skincare, it could be any of those things. And then I'll usually add on like $100 to that with her gift because, you know, I'm not doing more than that. <laughs> but yeah, so it just really depends on, you know, you. You know if you're gonna buy your son some Jordans and maybe your son is grown I'm not talking about a teenager or a child I'm talking about like an adult that you might be buying something for is it better to just give him $150 and let him go put the rest on his own Jordans it might be <laughs> right y'all get what I'm saying so you would have to ask yourself that question and kind of evaluate it for yourself because it's gonna vary from person to person but sometimes I actually find that giving money is better because sometimes people just need the money especially these days things is tight right now you know sometimes just gifting somebody sixty dollars eighty dollars a hundred dollars is actually better than going out and buying them something so yeah and then also you gotta worry about their taste and if you're gonna actually get it right like if you're buying them perfume and stuff like that like with my dad He'll specifically ask me what perfume I want so I can tell him exactly what to go get so that he doesn't make a mistake and get something that I don't like. So like you got to consider all of that when you're buying people gifts. So sometimes it might be a better option to just give them some money in a card and it might save you some money. But make sure you stay within that budget we talked about. Pull out the cash out of your account and use that money to like gift them or whatever. So just keep that in mind. Giving gifts versus giving money. The next thing that can certainly save a lot of us money during the holiday season is regifting. Now, this is a sensitive topic for a lot of people, but it is not for me personally. I think there are things that can qualify as good regifts. If somebody buys you a perfume that you do not like, but it's a good quality perfume, I think it's okay to regift it. That's why I don't really buy people perfume because you just never really know, but I think that's okay to regift it unused candles, things like that. Um, I think it's okay to re-gift something like that. If there's something that you have that's still in the packaging, unused, still has the tag on it, that you know another person would love, that maybe somebody else bought for you, I think it's okay to re-gift it. Okay, like, uh, that's all I can say. I'm not gonna elaborate on it, but I, per I personally think it's okay. And if somebody re-gifts something that I bought for them, I'm okay with that. I would not get upset with that because you know they're saving money and maybe they're giving an item that I bought them that they never use and aren't gonna use to somebody who will actually use it I don't have a problem with that doesn't mean they don't love me so another thing that I want to talk about and this is more of a suggestion but some of the 
most wonderful gifts I've ever gotten from people was in the form of baked goods, okay? <laughs> like, I have a cousin, my cousin Nikki, she is an amazing baker. Also, my cousin Renita, they, when it comes to dessert, baby, baby, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed to say that because on the holidays, when it comes to my family for dessert, yeah, yeah, they gonna kill it. <laughs> but I've gotten some really, really great baked gifts or like cooked gifts from people. And I think they make such a great gift. And it's a gift that people just don't give enough. A nice little you know tin of baked cookies you can buy those cookie tins on Amazon super super cheap like the holiday tins the empty ones and bake some cookies or even if you use the store-bought cookies and just like sprucing them up a little bit you know add some sea salt adding some pecans to them like you can do that as well there's so many options out there I'm gonna insert some Pinterest images right now of gifts that are in the form of baked goods so like how you can wrap them and stuff like that you can do cake you could do mini bunt cakes you can do like banana loaves um, you can do zucchini bread I love sweet zucchini bread my cousin Nikki makes the best zucchini bread you can do cookies um, anything like there's so many things out there that you can do as far as like baked goods you can do uh, bark like different chocolate bark my cousin Renita makes toffee like a caramel toffee with nuts in it so so good you guys like this is a great way to go and you can do like just dedicate a Sunday a few hours on a Sunday and do a huge batch like right before Christmas and just give it out to people they're gonna eat that shit. They're gonna love it, okay? They're not gonna have a problem with this. So that's a great suggestion for you all. If you have cooking or baking skills, think of those skills when you are preparing for your gifts because honestly, I love them. I love receiving stuff like that. And it just feels like it's made from love and made from the heart. So definitely consider that. Okay, so this last one is a pretty interesting. I just, it's really, it's just something that I wanna talk about. And that is that I've learned over the years that Black Friday is overhyped and dangerous. It really is. Um, and I'm speaking from a personal experience. I can recall particularly a Black Friday where I needed a new TV. My sister and I went to Walmart. We got there when it was still dark. It's probably like three o'clock in the morning. The line in front of us was not too long. And as they got closer to opening the store, which was gonna be about five or six o'clock in the morning, an entire family of people came and got in front of us. So I guess they, their family was sleeping in front of the, in the car or like in the area or something like that. And they just all got in front of us. And we didn't feel that that was right. And we ain't no punks on top of that. Like that ain't gonna fly. And so what we did is just walk right around their entire family and got in front of them because we don't play those games. And of course it turned into an issue, okay? And it's just me and my sister and then a whole family. And yeah, so that wasn't cool. And then of course they were a different nationality. And so there was really no negotiating as far as that goes because to me they were kind of racist in my opinion because why would you even do that? But um, yeah, so it was just interesting but it can be a little crazy. You see people fighting on Black Friday over deals that honestly are not even that great. I think some of the sales that we're seeing right now are better than what you see during Black Friday. I'm seeing tons of 30% off sales and stuff like that at H&M and different places. Macy's is having sales, their friends and family sales and stuff. Like these sales are pretty much just as good as the Black Friday sales. And then by the time Black Friday hits, a lot of stuff is sold out anyway, so you're better off just getting it earlier. So I just want to talk about that. I really think Black Friday is just not the time to do your holiday shopping. Maybe if you're doing it online, it might be okay. But as far as like going to stores, the stores are usually a mess. Like people tear them up. They have no respect and no decency. So I just, I, I've given up on Black Friday. I don't look for Black Friday um, as far as a resource to get my gifts and get good deals. I just don't even consider it anymore. My thing is to just do all the stuff that we talked about, plan ahead, you know, evaluate my list of people, consider whether I want to give money or gifts and things like that. But I don't like chase Black Friday anymore as far as like that day to get all of my gifts and wipe everybody out. But I know some people budget wise, they need the Black Friday deals. But for me personally, 
it's not worth it. I'm not going to stand in line at, stand in line at any store. I'm not going to risk getting into a physical confrontation with people and stuff like that. So I would say consider that and get your shopping done as early as possible instead of depending on or waiting for Black Friday to do it because it's crazy out there and it's just getting crazier this year. Like all these run outs and people stealing and stuff who wants to deal with all that you can actually really get hurt while you're out there so it's just not worth it i just want to bring that up for my last tip thank you all so much for checking out this video all about how to avoid going broke this holiday season i really hope you enjoyed it i hope you got some tips and tricks to help you all save money but still be your generous selves and still do all of the decorating and hosting that you want to do i really hope all of these tips are helpful honestly like I said in my intro, I'm speaking from experience, y'all. Like, there's definitely been some years where I just put myself in a bad situation trying to be generous and look out for everybody. And these days, I just move so differently now. So I hope this helped you all out. Definitely leave any tips and tricks that you might have in the comments so that all of us can read them and use them. You guys usually have so much wisdom to offer and I always appreciate it. So if there's anything that you want to leave that any of us can do to save money or any gift ideas or just whatever please leave them in the comments i would love to read them and respond to them so thank you guys so much for checking out the video make sure you subscribe before you go and of course to all my regulars i love you guys can't wait to see what you all have to say i'm looking for the knowledge so leave me something in those comments love y'all see you on the next one bye